Hello, Ljudas, Narvidas. Hi, hello. Welcome to Latvia, to this special place, uh, Dabini Swamp. And the first question I want to ask you uh, about uh, performance tonight. Uh, this will be special performance, the place, the musicians. And can you tell some background of uh, this performance tonight? Well, uh, this this year, uh, last July, <laughs> one day that was much more uh, colder than now, mm -hmm. <laughs> middle of July, uh, Marek Samerix uh, from Jerska Records called me and uh, actually proposed this idea. So he said, uh, Arvidas, well, what do you think? Uh, would you like to make a, a record, to make a recording session and maybe uh, release an album in a swamp? And uh, he was thinking it would be nice to to have uh, Ludas Moskonas uh, mm -hmm. as your partner because, uh, as uh, he observed, uh, the swamp uh, is very good for uh, uh, low frequency sounds. So mm -hmm. Ludas Moskonas immediately came to his mind as a uh, great bass saxophone player. He had an idea about me joining him on baritone primarily maybe also mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. other things so mm -hmm. he proposed to, to to make a record here which is yeah which i uh, of course accepted immediately so mm -hmm. so did ludas i think <laughs> like when i called you yeah indeed mm -hmm. okay in our conversation we have time limit because after some moments the performance will start then i will ask you uh, the basic questions <laughs> because both of you are uh, prominent saxophone players in the free just scene in an avant-garde and um, can i ask you a question uh, uh both of you about definition of free jazz what is free jazz for you both of you because a lot of stereotypes are mm. about free jazz. It's in just noise, or it's just a music for um, special people, or or, or some noise statement. Or uh, first of all, uh, when I hear the term free jazz, it immediately comes to me that it's uh, it's a it's a music tradition coming from U.S. from Black American. Mm -hmm. musicians Chicago based New York based and in Europe we do have a little different tradition which is I would say like it's I, I would call it improvised music which is coming mm -hmm. I don't know UK like London composers orchestra Barry guy and uh, all the people around him uh, so I kind of relate myself more to that than free jazz because on one hand of course I'm I didn't grow, grow up in 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 the US, of course, and this is like, you know, when I'm talking about the music and the, and the costumes sort of like. So mm -hmm. I think the, it's very natural for Americans to, to play jazz. It's mm -hmm. like uh, uh, we are a bit different. We we grew up in a different society. We we have different backgrounds. So we kind of have our point of view from our perspective to mm -hmm. to this genre in general, jazz, mm -hmm. which is called jazz or whenever, mm -hmm. impro or improvised music. So, uh, so of course, uh, talking about free jazz, it has a certain, uh, uh, certain code in the, in the, in the, in the in the term already it's free it's 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 a free music free music of free people music of freedom uh in freedom to declare your own ideas and uh, and, uh, and so on etc etc mm -hmm. uh on our hand this music is not is not new and uh, during the years it uh, sort of like uh became a stereotype or like it got, it got its own cliches you know like free mm -hmm. jazz is, uh, is, 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 is a it's music which is based on rhythm first of all it has this pulse jazzy pulse in swing. it swing mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's the first thing which comes to my mind you know when I'm when I hear th this term uh, in Europe it's a little bit different yeah it's mm -hmm. based on more like uh, a maybe a academic or classical music tradition or yeah. each country has its own i think also yeah. mm. but it's very important uh, in free jazz is sound 
uh, the source of sound. And, 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 and when we listen, for example, Albert Eiler or John Coltrane, you hear the source of sound is, um, it's aggressive. It's maybe mm. some fear, trembling. Mm. In Peter Brotsman, we hear anger. Uh, what is, uh, both of you, the source of sound in your uh, music? Well, uh, since uh, I w w wouldn't call, uh, call uh, what uh, what we do, I, <laughs> I take the liberty to <laughs> make make a, make a label. But uh, as uh, Ludas mentioned, it's more more of uh, improvised music, free improvised music, not so much on, of free jazz. And mm -hmm. uh, for me, also with the sound, uh, in terms of sound, also try to feel free uh, and uh, not let's say limit myself to <laughs> to be to playing with aggressive sound maybe <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I try to explore these kind of possibilities too so uh, of course I try to uh, make a free free blowing uh, free blowing sound uh, not stressed but uh, still uh, I mean there's there's a spectrum of, of possibilities so and, and we can uh, move on from being aggressive to being gentle. So I see it mm -hmm. also as a spectrum as a mm -hmm. possibilities to explore. But do you have some statement? Because there is statement always, social, political, personal, in, in your music, which kind of statement you have. Because when I hear your music, uh, of course it's, uh, it's, it's music of sound, it's not literal, literature you can't understand yes. very easy what he's talking about mm. exactly. but when I listen I feel there is statement Judas in your music what kind of statement you have uh, could I comment on the sound yeah okay okay thing? Yeah. I think it's it's a, it's it's an inter interesting object of mm -hmm. for me and and uh, and uh, I think it's a very interesting area I mean I sort of like as a musician I was I was not specifically interested in that that thing, which is called sound. I mean, sound like having a good sound on your instrument. That's this is one thing. Having voice, your own voice, is it's another thing. Another thing, and there is also this sound, and which is lately for me means uh, color. So I kind of when I'm playing, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, very much about uh, from the painter's perspective sometimes, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. how much color, what color do I use on on the on canvas? How much of this color is is there? How much it, it, it should be there? How, w what is dominating there or not? So so for me, it's the specter is very much. Well, you would you cannot probably call me impressionistic musician, but mm -hmm. I'm sort of like have this. That this thing on my mind actually about colors very much. So that's why I'm so, like uh, lately, like I would say, like for the la last five six years, I'm 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 searching for new sounds and accept accepting uh, any kind of sound actually in my vocabulary, mm -hmm. like even like hitting saxophone or my clarinet with mm -hmm. something you know, accidental sounds, like uh, sounds which uh, my instrument provokes me to make. Which I'm not control in control at all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's that's this very interesting area for me. Mm -hmm. And as an, uh, an an artist, I'm I'm kind of building my vocabulary on that. Like and and yeah. So it's that's why I'm experimenting with water, with uh, drums. Like I'm 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 playing into different kind of drums now. Mm -hmm. This is another thing for me actually. Uh, about which I'm this. Expecting. And yeah. About this wine, you yeah. have this uh, idea of uh, the sound of water. Yeah. The saxophone and the ambient noise and the water, and and, and now you uh, uh, you search for sound. Uh, you tell you search for colors, colors yeah, exactly, too. Yeah. It's ideal, like Scrabin. He saw yeah. the yeah. Uh, he mm. saw in the colors, sound yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and then and, and colors. And, oh, and, and you see composers. colors too. Not, not, not really. <laughs> no, 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 not that. Not no, that. Because it's very ob 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 obvious. It's, yeah. way. No, 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 no. It's not like it's that. It's so. Yeah, the the yeah. door is like I don't know, red blue or, or red or <laughs> yeah. or or purple or something. Yeah, but it's it, it becomes very clear for some for some when you are working with students. I'm teaching mm -hmm. improvisation, free improvisation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, like when 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 students they're playing too much sometimes, you know, and you hear that, and I'm saying, okay, imagine the canvas, uh, imagine mm -hmm. the painting. How much of your view? Is there 
probably like more than half of it, you know, for some mm-hmm. some some people. And some some people just making few dots in there, you know. So there has to be a balance if you're playing in the band. And, mm-hmm. and, and the same the same thing for musicians. It has to be a balance of of colors <laughs> somehow mm-hmm. if you want that. Yeah. Usually it's another thing. It's 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 very different from maybe jazz. Uh, I wouldn't say like ja- uh, the idea of playing jazz music in general, like uh, especially for a horn player. Mm. Usually, like saxophone players, they have or like any, any jazz musicians, like play when, while playing bebop, let's say, they have one sound. This is which is considered this is his own voice, but it's very, very often it's, it has no dynamics. It has maybe a build up up thing, but uh, it, it doesn't have that much colors. What what for instance classical. Musicians mm-hmm. can 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 make out of it, and I really miss. I'm 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 honestly missing a lot. Uh, this color uh, c- color thing in in in, in 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 jazz music, not in improvised. Improvised music can be very different, of course, mm-hmm. and there are di- a lot of different th- music. Uh, the, uh, I mean, there's so much music in 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 in, in the air now, and very different. So it, it has that. But like the, if we were like talking traditionally. Cliche wise, jazz music is really lacking this dynamics and mm-hmm. and uh, colors. I think mm-hmm. yeah, very much. Yeah, but about these colors and music, maybe there is some Lithuanian tradition because Chulionis, yeah, he yeah, was painter, painter and yeah. musician. Yeah. Yeah. And then I uh, ask you one question about in Latvia. We have this image of uh, Lithuanian jazz prominently as very strong free jazz and avant-garde movement. Of course, more Polish and Lithuanian jazz. In Latvia, we have more this bebop tradition, a bop tradition, yeah. linked with America historically in 80s and 70s. But Lithuanian jazz, um, Ganielin, Chekasin, Tarasov, of course, legendary Ganielin yeah. trio. Uh, can you tell about this background, about Lithuanian background? Why free jazz and avant-garde? Or is it just maybe stereotype? Mm, no, it's not just a stereotype. Mm-hmm. I think it, it's, it's, there is a lot of truth in it. Uh, you partly answered the question. It's because of these three uh, non-Lithuanians who were living actually, who, mm-hmm. man, who, 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 who came to live to Vilnius actually. In the, mm-hmm. I think, I'm not sure. I think Ganelin he he grew up in Vilnius, uh, and uh, Tarasov and Chakasin they came from in, Russia. Uh, yeah, from mm-hmm. Russia in the beginning of the 70s. Late 60s, late 70s, and they formed this trio, and uh, uh, they started to play together. And uh, it very much, I think, came from Ganelin because he he is a classical classical trained composer, and he was connecting these things. Jazz. I mean, of course, they were learning to j- play jazz. I think, and uh, listening to a lot of uh, Ellington and this, this back mm. in the years. Coltrane also, of course, was mm. was, was a hot uh, musician. Uh, at the beginning of the 70s and uh, everywhere, of course. Miles Davis Quintet was there with these, those traditions. You can imagine how much... Uh, of course, they, these, peop- these, these musicians were living behind the curtain, but how much was happening at the, in the 60s, mid-60s, in, uh, in, um, in America and also in Europe, actually. Mm. Like, uh, you, British avant-garde mus- musicians were c- coming up. But I think that they heard a lot of th- that stuff also. Ganelin and Chakasin, and uh, that's how this kind of original music, I would say, was formed there. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, especially Chakasin, he's a he was a very active teacher. He mm-hmm. taught people like Vishnauskas, who was a very interesting musician, and then Labutis and me and Arvidas 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 Arvidas. Me, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also. So we were, we were sort of like most of us were pupils of, of Chakasin. Mm-hmm. So I have never heard uh, actually. I had I heard Ganelin Trio only once in Vilnius the, at the concert where I organized. It was like when they got this national prize, uh, but never in the in the eighties. Or maybe I heard once, but I didn't understand the th- thing actually. Mm-hmm. So starting from from that, I would say like uh, festivals came like uh, festival like called like uh, called uh, Vilnius Jazz Festival. It was just called Jazz Forum mm-hmm. in the, at the beginning of the eighties, and that that festival has a huge input. To to spread the uh, let's say a non non mainstream uh, improvised music in general, I think, and mm-hmm. that continues for 20 years. That's where I was educated because I, I was uh, I was attending this festival since '87, 
It, mm-hmm. They came these festivals together with the uh, uh, with the uh, rock forum. It was called. It was a very non- interesting uh, rock festival. They had like people bands like Bjork, uh, Sugar Cubes, Sugar Cube, Sonic was Youth was playing in the mm-hmm. eight, eight, six or eighty seven, I think. So eighty seven Sonic Youth yes, exactly. were it Lithuania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sugar Cubes, Sonic uh-huh. Youth, a bunch of Russian uh, rock uh-huh. rock musicians like uh, Viktor Tsoi. Mm-hmm. He's now come, come in, big in Belarus again, yeah. So this kind of, you can imagine this pot, which yeah, was yeah, mi- and another thing was that it was, it was political, I think pretty much, especially coming from uh, musicians like Vishnauskas, and uh, they they felt this, it was a form of expression, I think, of freedom for them very much. When I when I think back, when I watch mm-hmm. w- watch. Uh, or hear this music uh, from nowadays. There are a lot of a lot of uh, videos actually on the archive from the Lithuanian uh, mm-hmm. national TV or archives, and it's very interesting music. Jozas mm-hmm. Melashis is a very interesting musician, uh, mm-hmm. noise guitar player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. and then in the 90s, uh, when all these countries like Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia became free, that kind of there was no interest from the audience to this music, like automatically, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, the protest was gone, so yeah. there was nothing to protest again. So I think the 90s was a bit, bit a weird uh, time for mm-hmm. experimental experimental music in general. And, but uh, now? And now it's back. Yeah. Now it's, it's back, it's, the it's, statement it's, in, in free jazz. I think so. I think the like uh, uh, young musicians, they mm-hmm. bring their own statement now, which has nothing to do with, uh, let's say, tr- Ganellan uh, trio tradition mm-hmm. anymore. They, they know that this band was historically, but but they have their own voice and. Uh, but you know this, uh, I'm kind of I'm not naive. Uh, I, I was watching. I, I mean, I, I live o- long enough. I was watching this this periods like ups and downs mm-hmm. in general. It's like the next generation is coming and they protest what was before, you know, and then mm-hmm. it's, that's a nat- that's a very natural life I think now, which is going on. Yeah. Okay, and um, again, the basics uh, about your first steps in music. Um, can you remember the first moment when you recognize the power of music, the power of sound? It's in Panyvezhus. You are from Panyvezhus. You born in the city. Yeah, but I grew yeah. up in Vilnius. In, ah, yeah, in Vilnius. You know, I, I was uh, in eighties, and about you are with us too. The first impressions of music. It's mm. the first steps. Music so school so teachers. Yeah, yeah. So long ago. <laughs> Good question. We, when you have to go really back, what was the start? Actually, my father uh, um, uh, <laughs> advised me to go to to music school, mm-hmm. which I agreed, and <laughs> it turned out well. And uh, yeah, so uh, I, I study mostly, uh, of course, um, uh, academic uh, classical music, but uh, I also um, studied uh, jazz music. Uh, we had this um, uh, ba- uh, student band in in the in the music school and uh, which uh, um, Chekasin <laughs> supervised. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so it was a v- very strong uh, strong experience, and I, I think that's where my uh, my uh, uh, <laughs> how do you say my passion to play out of <laughs> out of boundaries ca- come fr- comes from because. Um, uh, yeah, you, you get this this kind of uh, freedom in in a bigger project, and uh, this kind of is very inspiring. This kind of uh, uh, teachers and pedagogues, when you can see how how things are building up, how they think, how they how they work with the, with the material. So that's that's uh, was. Did maybe some records you remember from? Um, um, tapes, to- tapes, talking, it was tapes. Talking, tapes, talking yeah. from tapes. records, I, I have to say thanks to my, uh, actually to my classical saxophone teacher, Libinos Gujalis, uh, who showed me, uh, not not really free jazz re- records, some uh, don't have <laughs> such a f- free free jazz uh, background, let's say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was mainstream records by uh, by uh, guitar player Pat Metheny and mm-hmm. um, Michael Brecker and uh, and uh, Charlie Parker also used to play these transcriptions and go, go through through mm-hmm. the Omni book and uh, trying to go through uh, tradition. Yeah, go through tradition. So I have, have a kind of 
this this uh, a little bit of this part too. So, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah. You this about you? Uh, my father is a musician. He's mm -hmm. a saxophone player and and and, and mm -hmm. uh, clarinet player. So yeah, it was natural that I heard this music from very early, uh, like Charlie Parker records. Coltrane was at we we uh, Ellington. Some of Ornette Coleman as well was. I heard it at home since I was a child. Already, uh, of course, I didn't. I didn't like it. <laughs> or I didn't. <laughs> I didn't dig it. Or at all. Coleman or no, 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 <laughs> no, no. no, no. <laughs> so it was a natural. Let's say my listening. Let's say uh, journey was uh, starting with the uh, fusion. I would say or pop, some pop music. Going to the fusion, into the fusion, and then from fusion because I like Miles Davis stuff, from Miles Davis to Miles 70s, Davis, yeah, yeah like I, I, everything after Beaches Brew, let's say, yeah. mm. Weather Report, yeah. Then um, through Miles Davis, I went to Miles Davis Quintet, which I really liked with the Quintet, especially with the Wayne Shorter, mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah, Ron Carter, Herbie, mm. uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then like sort of like uh, back to the roots from mm -hmm. from uh, where music was at that moment in the 80s, let's say. Yeah. Uh, a big thing for me when I was a kid, I would say, was uh, a, an important album. Actually, it was it was not uh, it was not a jazz record, but sort of like through this record, I I started to I I kind of felt this need to play saxophone, soprano saxophone mm -hmm. especially. It was uh, uh, Stinks. Uh, playing for bring, Yeah, Bring on the Night, the life. Yeah. Of and this is basically the only Sting album I like still. Mm -hmm. I still listen to it. Like, but Brentford later. plays in first, the Sting yeah, album too. Yeah, yeah, like too. The, the, life, uh, yeah, the yeah. life record. Another thing which is, was very, of course, I al I'm also a pupil of Chakassin. Mm -hmm. I started to, I was, I started to, uh, at music school with him, but then I, when I then I studied classical clarinet for ten years, and so mm -hmm. at the academy I was back to to study with him. But we he had this pupils band, which was a very important thing, which we we are a part of it, and a bit, a bit earlier than than Arvid does. But we were like traveling Europe and also playing with professional musicians. So it was sort of like a com com community, like mm -hmm. kids playing with uh, grown ups, mm -hmm. very good musicians. We mix. And he would include all of us into his huge projects. Yeah, yeah which is it was it was <laughs> yeah. a so, very much of a social life, you know. Like mm -hmm. uh, I mean, going to the ca to camps during the summer, going on tours in the like '87, you know, like Austria, Switzerland. That was mm -hmm. that was um, unbelievable. But it was a miracle, mm -hmm. you know, for us the kids from the Soviets, you know, Soviet, mm -hmm. Soviet countries, yeah, country, you know. So, so it was uh, sort of like he managed to show. I mean, he would never. Uh, I mean, Chakassin, he would never try to dig into deep into your life, but he sort of like very naturally showed us what it is to be a musician and mm -hmm. what is the joy of playing music, and which is the most important thing, I think, for a pedagogue to mm -hmm. be able to do that. And, and at the same time, to be able to go your own way, like try, like he never probably spelled the words uh, I, I'm telling now but but uh, it was it was his message I think from the mm -hmm. beginning uh, and it still is mm -hmm. still teaching and uh, so imagine it, it, it was a big th it, it is a big thing that those three uh, great musicians lived in Vilnius for mm -hmm. uh, for for a dec decade yeah Chicasso uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and, uh, yeah. and about giants a little bit some sentences mm -hmm. uh, Ornit Coleman mm -hmm in free jazz context for you mm. or not common um, I, l l I absolutely is it, absolutely yeah. I, I like it's it. pioneer yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's pioneer. and coltrane in the context of free and avant-garde yes uh, which Definitely. records like uh, two or one just Supreme. choose one i would say coast to coast coast to coast it's a hidden record it's Hit, alive yeah yeah it's it's a i think it has this record has this uh energy of you have a metal band, I think. Very mm -hmm, much. It's, mm -hmm. it's the traditional uh, quartet with. Uh, it's Golden Quartet. Uh, it's got the Golden Quartet. Yeah, yeah. It's Elvin one Jones the, uh, I think it's Chamber. one of the latest, probably. Yeah. Uh -huh, I'm, I'm not sure actually. Before I'm Sunship, not. it's the context yeah, yeah, of yeah, Sunship. Yeah, yeah, But they play mm -hmm. really, really great on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then. Um, You're still in in the metal the, band. The late in ones. The sound energy of metal band. I think. I mean, <laughs> we. 
I was, yeah. you know, I was spending. Uh, I was, it, I was lucky to stay at uh, friends of mine, uh, uh, German saxophone players, uh, Frank Gratkowski's mm-hmm. apartment for for a week, and we like every night we were we were doing recordings. Uh, uh, for 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 uh, another musician, and uh, every night we were like getting a bit drunk and listening to a bunch of records, and we <laughs> agreed both of us that okay, this this record has uh, this uh, have that the musicians record. should listen to that. That's where the energy, you <laughs> okay, know, how okay. it's how to build it, you know. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Albert Tyler, yes, <laughs> yeah. The sound, uh, Miles the, the Davis, the I think. I, I, this yeah. is. Like the quintet, the say. quintet for yeah. you, yeah. Uh, Eric Dolphy, out Eric to, Dolphy, uh, to, out to lunch, oh, out to lunch. Uh, John Zorn, in it's contemporary, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, Naked City, all those. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was into that music. Uh, I was twenty years ago a lot, and mm-hmm. then I would sh- I should mention if we are touching that that area, like the downtown uh, New York music, uh, Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, I would say maybe not to burn himself, but his bands with uh, musicians like uh, Mark Ducre. Mark uh, Ducre, you play with? I played with him. Guitar and, uh, player. Yeah, mm-hmm. Jim Black. Mm-hmm. I was like, at some, at some, some, some point, I was very much inspired by them. I, I was like, uh, mm-hmm. like twenty years ago as well. Uh, Ellie Reskin, I would say also maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, so th- that was very important for me. Also, I would say Vilnius Jazz Festival, uh, sort of, I mean, I heard so many things there, so many great musicians, that it was like some context really, some concerts really made a change in me. I I was Mm -hmm. very much like, as well, like I was studying mainstream jazz and uh, in the 90s I wanted to, wanted to go to play fast bebop and all mm-hmm. that. But there was some, some concerts like, like uh, there was this concert of Oliver Lake, uh, Cindy Blackman was playing the drums, uh, um, Mark Dresser on bass mm-hmm. and Sonny Simmons quartet and that kind of changed when I, mean, I heard that you know band. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, something changed in me. Also, also there was Charles Lloyd Quintet, Lloyd, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, very impressive concert. Live, rec- yeah. Live, live performances. I also had like Steve Lacey, Peter Brotsman. I didn't mm-hmm. understand that shit back then. Mm-hmm. Know, <laughs> too, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Steve Lacey playing uh, mm-hmm. solo. Yeah, I would love to hear that now. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, but about uh, Norwegian scene, um, mm-hmm. yes, prominent young Garborek, and then the followers Trig was same contemporary, but uh, it's different. Than than free and avant-garde, but anyway. I really yeah. like uh, Garbarek from seventies, yeah. like the, the the his first. Key Jarrett, oh, no, not no, Key Jarrett, Jarrett, but uh, yeah. Christensen yeah, and Chris all these yeah, uh, early yeah, records. Yeah, Bob African Stanson, Pepper, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. where he plays bass saxophone as well. Mm-hmm. There are those. Yeah, I I, I I I like that. Yeah, and then up to I would say maybe Keith Jarrett, uh, European quartet, some mm-hmm. like live recordings are great. I think like mm-hmm. um, I think Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it was very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nowadays there are fantastic improvisers coming from Norway. From mm-hmm. Paul Lovan. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, y- yeah. Like. Yeah. I mean those guys from the Thing. Uh, yeah. Super Paul Silent. Neil, no. It's more no no. no, no. <laughs> it's uh, super silent. No. I, my friend plays there. But the yes. Bass Mark, uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, I listen, but. Uh, but you don't listen. Super no, silent. No, yeah. No. But why? No, not my cup of not, tea. No, not no, no. I, I, I understand that, of course, but... Uh, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, Jan Garbarek, for, for me, is, was also a big uh, influence, I think. Uh, I mean, a, 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 as a musician, mm-hmm. with his uh, very own kind of sound, you can immediately mm-hmm. recognize him from mm-hmm. uh, all, all records, I think. Uh, yeah, this and strong with, sound. With he- Hiller Ensemble, of course, and... Uh, Mm. Speaking of Norway, um, uh, probably m- my favorite favorite uh, saxophone player is <laughs> is uh, m- my friend uh, who's 
not really a jazz musician, but not really a, a pure classical saxophone player. His name is Rolf Erik Nistrom, mm-hmm. and he was a couple of times here in Riga, and we collaborated in, in, a, in a student context. And he, mm-hmm. he, the, the things he, how he. Uh, the last question: um, If I gave you opportunity to travel in time and space, uh, just daydreaming, I daydreaming, you daydreaming, which concert? Uh, or uh, the, the, the musician could be dead or alive just to see for five minutes just to see performance like tonight you will play and good luck both of mm. you but uh, what you choose just five minutes of one 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 or group band yeah. musician composer for me it's uh, I won't be too original I <laughs> think again that would be uh, p- either Parker or Brecker for me so uh, Charlie Parker or, or Michael, Michael Brecker. Michael Brecker. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> 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 space, that has to be Sun Ra. Sun Ra? Sun Ra Orchestra. 70s, 80s? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, not, <laughs> not, not necessarily, but yeah. Like Mars, space. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is one musician, actually. I played a bit and... I as as a I really felt like we were soulmates, but uh, then we didn't get to play more with him. Uh, so uh, it was Andrew Hill. The Andrew piano, Hill piano. Yeah, piano yeah, yeah. And uh, I, it happened that uh, that I, I I did a tour with him for one week, and and then uh, we talked to play more, but unfortunately. Uh, the man passed away, and and uh, that mm. never happened. So I, I, I still kind of, uh, you know, I, mm-hmm. as a young musician, I, I had really big expectations, and also it was extremely interesting for me too, because it was a living, living uh, legend back, back in the years. He played with Parker, he played with Dolphy, with everybody, you know, and and, in the 60s, and also this the spirit yeah, of uh, uh, of free jazz, American. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about free jazz, yeah. So. It's, so I, I felt that something real is happening in my life back then, and it kind of ended up not bec- for of obvious course. reason, you know. Yeah. So, so I would like to, if if that would be possible, you know, of course. Yeah, he's giant. The the, no. uh, the record uh, point of departure. Yeah, point of departure. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, in, in middle of sixties. It's his landmark record, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and you play with him. Yeah, there was a record out, out with him. Uh, yeah. With the, the, okay. uh, yeah. With uh, his uh, Lucky o- o- you. octet, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it never happened again. And yeah, so yeah. okay, thank you for conversation. It was yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and a nice performance tonight. I hope, not hope. I think it will be a nice performance in this very special place. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Nudis. Thank you, Nudis. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.